Mark recently released a tool called Conform Object, and the easiest way to demonstrate it is to just press Q and go to Mesh Tools, and we'll hit this with a sphere cast. And then from here, we can Shift A and just bring in a box and just place it up above and begin, you know, let's just do some maneuvers to it. So we'll get in here with Box Cutter, mirror it to the other side, perform a few additional cuts, and something like this, maybe even a cut on the inside. And to really make it conform to the bottom, I find that, you know, looking at it either in top view or bottom view and just going to dice in edit mode and pressing V also helps with it just because it'll help it conform very nicely to the bottom. And from here, we're just going to select this object and this object. And by going under mesh tools, if you have conform object installed, as in you purchase it from the market, whenever you press Q under mesh tools, there'll be an option for you to conform the object. And so basically with this thing, we can just go in and play with the end factor in order to preserve the area that we want while getting it to conform in the area that we want, which is really the beauty of this thing. I am a big fan of this tool because it's so simple and does one thing very well, which is conform the object. However, whenever it comes to duplicating it, we can just shift D, right click, and we don't have any more conforming to have to deal with. So let us just rotate this a couple of times, scale it up, and right click again. And we see that conform objects also in the right click menu where we can go in and begin making fine adjustments to what exactly is being conformed to the object. In fact, the conforming grid is also something interesting that I didn't even know about until I read his documentation. It's like, oh snap, dude, there's a grid that we can deal with. That's awesome. But let's undo this. And we see that our object is actually over encompassing by quite a bit. So we want to just have it fit inside the bounds. So let us press Q, go under mesh tools, conform object, conform object again. And this time we see that we have a more fluid transition happening with the surface. And because I actually clicked away, we no longer have the F9. So I imagine that that's something that new users struggle with is the awareness that whenever you use an operation, the F9 that's located here is only here for a brief moment. Like the moment that I deselect or I select another object, this entire option is gone and we can't revisit it ever again. But we can at least go in and look at that cool grid for a moment. In fact, let's play with our grid subdivisions just to see what it's doing, almost nothing, but still very interesting to look at. I still feel there's more documentation that I need to review on this, but just wanted to give a shout out to Mark Kingsnorth for his recent add-on. In fact, if you press Control K, you can bring up the preferences for both hard ops and box cutter. And under the add-ons tab, we see that conform object also has a button where basically clicking it will take you to the sales page where you can pick up the product. But in the event that you have it, or you have any of them, just clicking these buttons will just remind you that these tools are active. It appears that I need to update my batch ops, but other than that, everything else is pretty active. All systems are a go.